kakaroon ka sometimes ng 5 to 6 5 to 6 patients I don't wanna discourage you but that's um, reality so hello everyone welcome back to my channel this is your nurse Gma. so today we're gonna talk about the routine in LTAC anyway thank you pala sa mga um the comment medyo maganda yung feedback uh nung last video ko about LTAC um i tried to be as as informative as possible so through that video um I hope magkaroon kayo ng idea of what really LTAC is. So now, I want to share with you the routine uh, in LTAC. I will share to you how I work. No, I mean, iba-iba naman yung style talaga ng um, mga nurses. But... Kwento lang to, kwento-kwento lang, para lang din magka-idea kayo kung ano ba yung nangyayari sa 12-hour shift. Dito sa America pala, if you are a night nurse, you're gonna be a night nurse for, like, for, like, for a long time. Unless mag-request ka na, um, magpa-morning. But, usually, kung morning ka, morning ka na. Kung night ka, night ka na. So, yung, uh, isi-share ko sa inyo is more on the night shift. So, ganito. Once you go to the, uh, the hospital, um, after you clock in, first is kukunin mo yung patient assignment. So, may nakaready ng patient assignment dyan. And then, uh, nandun nakalagay yung magiging patients mo. Yung mga nurses and then below the names of the nurses are the, the patients under them. And then, nakalagay din dun yung total census. Nakalagay yung kung sino yung charge nurse or clinical coordinator. Sino yung mga techs. What I mean is the PCTs, we call them uh, patient care te technician. Sila yung mga, umaga sa atin yung nursing aid or nursing orderly. Tawag dito is PCT or tech. Nakalagay din yung mga phone numbers. And then pag magkakaroon ng code, sino yung magiging medication nurse, yung magpa-pump, sino yung mag-record uh, or mag-document. So, nakalagay lahat yun dun sa patient assignment. So, after you get that paper, there's uh, before the start of the shift, there's uh, going to be a huddle first. Basically, uh, the clinical coordinator of the day shift will give updates about what happened during the day shift. Tapos, uh, ano yung mga significant events. And then, syempre, sasabihin din yung, yung total census, kung ilan yung naging admission, ilan yung naging uh, discharges, sino yung mga naka-pick um, lines or naka-central lines, sino yung mga naka-restraint, sino yung naka-foley catheter, kung nag-doctor pit, or kung nag-code, or kung may nag-fall, or may cases ng um, infe bagong infection, sino yung mga nag-call outs, Ano yung mga special announcements? It will go like 5 to 10 minutes, but it depends kung madaming uh, issues and concerns. So, may, pwede mag 15 minutes, but usually 5 to 10 minutes uh, yung huddle. And then, after nung huddle, siyempre pupunta ka na sa area mo kung saan ka naka-assign. I-receive mo na yung mga uh, nurses ng day shift. So, Anyway, may nagtanong about uh, nurse-patient ratio. Um, ganito, during the interview, as I remember it, we were told we're gonna have like uh, three to four patients. But um, when we came to LTAC, it's not really the case. Um, usually, it's a day shift na-achieve nila yung 3 to 4 kasi they said mas busy daw yung day shift compared sa night shift but during the night shift very common yung 4 to 5 patients uh, in a regular ward and then sa um, SCU or yung sinasabing special care unit 2 is uh, 1 is to 2 patients sometimes kung um, it depends nga sa acuity Pwedeng one is to one, pwedeng 
kung may kung short staff um, one is to four patients like I said these patients are not really stable and you still consider them as like I see a patient so I don't want to discourage you but that's um, reality so um, I'm just being honest Dito sa US, medyo compared sa atin dyan, short yung mga nurses dito. Kung hindi man short, mabilis yung turnover. I mean, um, madami nag-resign. Ganun dito. Ano pa ba? Ang dami ko nang nasabi. Anyway, pag halimbawa yung uh, na-handle ko na yung patient last night, tapos bumalik lang din naman ako. Siyempre, kilala ko na yung mga patient. So, pag uh, mag accept ako ng endorsement, magtatanong lang ako ng any update dun sa pasyente. ba? Diba? Pero pag new patient, siyempre, hindi mo kilala, mag ka ngayon, mag -de ka ng full endorsement. Um, this, the endorsement can go up to mga 2 to 3 minutes, ganun. Uh, or maximum of 5 minutes. Parang mahaba na ata masyado yung 5 minutes. Um, so, yeah, siguro 2 to 3 minutes endorsement. And then, um, after mo makuha yung mga reports, what I usually do is I go to the the computer, to the nurse station. And then, i-organize ko yung mga kung sino yung patients ko. And then, um, Ayan, magbabasa ako ng mabilis ang pagbabasa ng mga history and physicals ng patient para magkaroon ako ng ano, mag-idea kung sino yung mga patient ko kasi minsan nga, um, mabilisan lang yung um, endorsement plus I don't rely too much on the endorsement nag rely talaga ako sa chart kung ano yung um, nakalagay sa chart ng pasyente no um, so yun, history and physicals para magkaroon ka ng clinical picture of your patient. So yun yung ginagawa ko. And then babalikan ko ngayon isa-isa yung mga patients ko. I will do my assessment now. As much as possible, yung mabilis ang assessment. Pero ano, I try to make it like from head to toe assessment. Kausapin mo ngayon yung pasyente para ma ma-determine mo yung uh, orientation ng pasyente, kung alert and oriented ba yung pasyente, um, to check mo yung mga contraptions niya, to check mo yung uh, kung ano yung setup ng ventilator, kung nakabenta yung patient, kung naka-tricolor yung pasyente or naka nasal cannula or naka room air lang. Um ayun, dito double check ko siya with my uh kung ano yung binigay sa akin reports, kung tama nga. And then, ano yung IV access ng pasyente, kung naka-central line ba ito. Um, very common na may mga central line naman yung mga patient namin, yung tinatawag namin na pick lines. Or, um, kung mga INT, yung mga IV catheter sa atin, tawag nila dito is INT. So, check mo yan kung anong gauge, saan located. Check mo ngayon yung ET trick, kung um, may bleeding or something. Mabilisan lang and then check mo ngayon yung um, chan niya, kung may peg tube, may colostomy, ileostomy, or may pigtail dyan. Check yan and then... Uh, Check mo kung naka foley cut yung pasyente or naka diaper or naka pure wig. Check mo yung skin kung ano yung mga sugat, ano yung kung manas yung pasyente. Mabilisan lang yan ha. Parang in your mind na ano mo na yung pat na, nagkakaroon ka na ng clinical picture of uh, your patient talaga. So with your assessment. So check mo rin syempre yung kung ano yung mga ongoing na IV fluids or kung naka-TPN, kung um, naka-antibiotics. Um, so check mo yung tube feeding, kung tama yung rate as ordered. No? Yun, so check mo kung komportable yung pasyente. So after you do the initial assessment, what I do now is 
pupunta na ako ngayon ng um, pixies para kunin yung mga gamot ng pasyente. Kasi yung timing ng paggamot, pagbibigay ng gamot sa LTAC is usually starts at 9pm. Yung, yung bulk ng gamot na ibibigay sa pasyente is nasa 9pm. So, punta na ako ng pixies, kunin ko na yung lahat ng 4-9pm. Pwede ko lang isabay yung kung may 10pm na uh, gamot. Kasi naman yung gamot, you can give like an hour before and after. I try to start as early as possible na maibigay ko na agad yung mga gamot sa pasyente. Kasi medyo matrabaho yung documentation sa LTAC. Uh, ang daming kailangan i-fill up sa computer. As much as possible, gawin mo, bigay mo na yung mga gamot and then mag-start ka na ng um, charting mo. Kasi ang susunod na namang gamutan yan is 12 midnight. So, kung may 11 p.m., sometimes sinasabay ko na yan sa 12 midnight. Well, it still depends on the medication, syempre. By 12 to 1, yun na yung break time. Um, I think we have like a 30-minute uh, break time na we can have our break. Ayan, after yan, tatapusin mo ulit yung mga charting mo. Here's the thing. Um... The main thing na nag-struggle ako nung start nung uh, nag-work ako sa LTAC is the charting. Kasi um, when I was in Philippine Heart Center, ma madami din naman yung paperwork, but we focus talaga sa ano, we focus sa patient. Well, pagdating naman sa you know, sa paglinis ng pasyente, It's mainly the the job of the tech. So, sila talaga ang naglilinis sa pasyente. Hindi naman kami nag... Mga nurses hindi naman nagpapaligo. It's the tech. But, if you're assigned in the ICU and you have two patients and then walang tech, kasi usually ganun, dalawang nurse, tapos walang tech, ikaw lahat. Yun yung parang mas... Um, nabibigay mo yung care mo sa pasyente pag dalawa lang talaga yung pasyente mo. Kaso pag sa regular room, you have 4 to 5 or 5 to 6 patients. Ang pinaka priority mo is and like we were told also during the interview, ang pinaka ginagawa talaga ng nurses is more on medication and documentation. So yun yung talaga priority mo, yung maibigay mo yung mga gamot ng pasyente and then yung charting mo. Um, you know, charting can, like when I started, one patient like 15 minutes to finish the assessment. But then hindi lang naman yung, yung gagawin mo sa chart ng pasyente. Meron kang plan of care, meron kang you know, vital signs, yeah, ano mo yun eh. Um, i-address mo yun sa mga vital signs mo. Nilalagay yun ng mga tech. Sila naman nag nalagay ng vital signs. Pero i-address mo pa rin. Siyempre yun. Siyempre yung mga INOs. Didocument mo rin yung mga INOs. Kung naka-restraints yung pasyente, kailangan mo din i-document yun every two hours. So by three to four, Uh, usually, di ba nga, I, I, I mentioned like wound care. By 3 to 4 in the morning, doon na kami nag-start ng mga, kung may mga wound dressing na dapat gawin. Um, start na yan. And then by 4 to 5 a.m., kung may mga uh, order na routine labs, doon namin in-extract yung mga blood. Kasi ang pickup ng specimen is around 6 in the 6 to 7 in the morning. So by 6 in the morning, bigay ka ulit ng mga gamot ng pasyente and then 6 to 7 closing of the charts na. So kailangan mo na ikumpletuhin, tapusin na yung chart mo kasi 7 mag-start na yung endorsement. Up. So I hope may natutunan kayo diyan. Please subscribe to my channel. Please like this video and uh, click the notification bell para naman ma-up. Alam mo yun, ever na maglabas ako ng another video, manalaman nyo agad. 
Yes, artista. <laughs> so follow my Instagram, Nurse G Matthew S, or my Twitter, same, uh, Nurse G Matthew S, and then share my Facebook account, Nurse G Mat. And comment down below if you have questions. Kayo. I'll be happy to answer your questions, okay? If you have any issues that I didn't answer, or or any suggestion na gusto nyo malaman so I can uh, make a new video for that okay so you have a good day everyone thank you bye